So in my recent video where I asked y'all for suggestions, many of you wanted more science videos, and I maintain that economics videos are science videos, but never mind. When I was thinking about what subjects I could do when it occurred to me, I mentioned one in that very video, balanced and unbalanced microphones. What does it mean when a microphone is balanced or unbalanced? Even if you're not a professional audio guy or an audiophile, I think you'll find the science behind this is really quite cool. What you want in any recording is as much of the subject as you can get with as little extra noise as possible. Now there are two sources of noise. Environmental noise, which is caused by things like air conditioners, you know, the miscellaneous background noise you usually get, and interference. What we're talking about has to do with interference. Interference happens after the signal is sent from the microphone while it's traveling along the mic cable as an electrical signal. Any source of EM can interfere with this, and this includes intentional transmissions like wireless broadcast signals, or unintentionally such as a nearby power source or power cable. Any electronic device, including computers and lighting rigs, can be a source of electrical interference. If these EM frequencies overlap with the audio signal on the cable, the result is additional noise in the audio. So let's start with different kinds of mics. The one that probably makes the most sense to a non-audiophile is the stereo mic. You know that 3.5 millimeter jack on your earbuds? Speakers are basically reversed microphones, and what you have are three contacts. One for the ground, one for the signal going into your left ear, and the other going into your right ear. A stereo microphone is the same way, only it plugs into the microphone port and records audio rather than plays it back. However, most mics are not stereo. They're mono, and they only pick up one source of audio which is generally the person speaking or singing into it. But notice that you will still have these three connectors. In addition to the ground, the same signal is sent down both of the other wires, meaning you'll record exactly the same audio in the left and right channels. Interference means that these waveforms have been changed, and now there's additional noise that you don't want, that you have no way of separating out. Oh sure, there are filters you can use, some of them very good, but none of them are perfect. The problem is that the noise is mushed into the sound wave and there's no way to take it back out. Inner balanced microphones. A balanced microphone still has these three connectors, a ground, an in-phase signal, and an anti-phase signal. The in-phase signal is exactly what the unbalanced mic would send down both wires. The anti-phase signal is the same signal 180 degrees out of phase. And what it means is that, at any given time, the total voltage sent down the wire is zero. Plus however many volts on the in-phase signal means there's minus the same number of volts on the anti-phase signal. In other words, words that any Doctor Who fan will recognize, you reverse the polarity. Let's look at a sine wave. The basic sine wave starts at zero, peaks at 90 degrees, moves back down, crosses zero at 180 degrees, bottoms out at 270 degrees, and then reaches zero again at 360 degrees, and then it starts all over again. That's what you get if you plotted sine x on a graph. What you get if you plot sine minus x is the inverse of that wave. It begins going down instead of up, bottoms out at 90, then peaks at 270, returning to zero at 360. We've just switched the up and down direction of the sine wave. We say this is 180 degrees out of phase because the result is exactly if you'd taken the first wave, sine x, and shifted it 180 degrees in either direction. With an unbalanced mic, if you combined the left and right signal, they just reinforce each other. But with a balanced mic, every time the in-phase signal increases, the anti-phase signal decreases by the same amount, and vice versa. So combine the two signals and they zero out and become silence. This is how DJs used to do karaoke. Since vocal tracks used to be mixed center only with the instruments in stereo, they'd reverse the polarity on one of the signal wires and combine them together. Anything mixed exactly in the center, which was usually the vocals, got eliminated, leaving the stereo instruments audible. Okay, so what? What difference does that make? What's the point of doing this anti-phase stuff? Why do we care that the total voltage is zero? Well, let's bring interference into the equation. Here we have our sine wave with a tiny bit of interference, right here. On an unbalanced mic, both signals are in phase, so we have no way of filtering out this interference. Combining the two signals reinforces the interference as well as the original signal. 
but on a balanced microphone, the two signals are out of phase, but the interference is never going to be out of phase. What gets added to one signal gets added to the other. So here, the interference happens at the same place, but since the second signal is antiphase, when it gets added to the peak of the in phase signal, it gets added to the trough of the antiphase signal. Which means, at that moment, the total voltage is not zero, and so the change in overall voltage represents interference on the wire. So if we were to take these two signals and combine them as we did before, the original signal sent from the microphone would cancel out, but the interference wouldn't. Now you might be thinking, well that's useless. I want to eliminate the interference and keep the signal, not the other way around. This is why it's important to have the proper input for a balanced mic. All mic inputs have a preamp, otherwise they'd be too soft to hear. But an input for a balanced mic has a particular kind of preamp called a differential amplifier. Really, all it does is convert the antiphase signal back to in phase so that the two signals match again. But remember, the interference wasn't out of phase. So the same process that inverts the antiphase signal to make it in phase will also make the in phase interference 180 degrees out of phase. So now, when we combine the two signals, we're reinforcing the microphone signal, the part we want to record, and the interference on the cable gets eliminated. So it's important to understand what kind of microphone you're using and what kind of input you need. Consumer microphones are pretty much all going to be unbalanced. Almost all microphones with an XLR connector are balanced. If it uses a 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch jack, it's probably not, but it may be. Check the documentation. You don't generally need a balanced mic on a short cable run. Here's a Rode video mic I use, and since the cable only has to go a few inches to plug into the recorder, there's not much room for interference. Even when it's on a boom pole, it's only 10 feet or so, and since it's held up in the air and managed by the boom operator, sources of noise aren't usually an issue there either, although many shotgun mics made especially for boom poles are balanced. But when you have, say, a mic at a lectern, and it has to go 50 feet to the auditorium's sound system, and might go near outlets and power cables and who knows what else, you'll want a balanced microphone there. Anytime you have a long cable run, or have a chance of running it near a source of interference, you'll want a balanced microphone. Now if you have a balanced microphone, but the only input you have is unbalanced, a simple adapter will take care of it. All you need to do is duplicate the in phase signal on the other wire, and they generally ground the antiphase signal so it's not left floating, as they say. And of course, it won't eliminate the interference anymore, but it'll work. But if you have an unbalanced microphone, but want to go to a balanced input, you'll want a DI unit, or a direct input unit. These have an audio transformer that inverts the phase of the second signal, but understand, any interference up to the DI box will not be eliminated. Only interference after the DI box balances the signal will be rejected. So place the DI box as close to the microphone as possible. One big use for these is with electric guitars and other electronic instruments. Notice that the quarter inch jack on these only has two connectors instead of three. It just has a ground and a signal, so these are unbalanced. And how often have you been annoyed by the interference coming into your amplifier? But if you run it through a DI box, then you can plug it into an XLR connector on the sound system and eliminate that interference entirely. So that's the really cool science behind how balanced microphones eliminate interference.